Welcome to another episode of Keeping It Real, the largest podcast made by real estate agents and for real estate agents. My name is DJ Paris. I am your guide and host through the show. And today, once again, is our monthly series called Learn with a Lender with Joel Schaub from Guaranteed Rate. Now, Joel is the Vice President of Lending at Guaranteed Rate. He's been doing loans at a very high level since 2003. And he's got to that level because of what he does specifically for agents, which is he gives back part of his commission to the buyer on every transaction. He makes agents look like heroes. Now, last year alone, Joel gave back over uh, $291,000 in closing costs. In fact, I think he gave more. That's probably an old number. So he'll correct us in a moment. But he gives back a lot. And that's to people who who work with him. And that puts Joel's volume in the top one-tenth of 1% of all lenders nationwide. In fact, out of over 400,000 loan officers in the country, Joel's currently ranked number 137. Last year, for his best year ever, he did 620 transactions, uh, his highest amount ever for the year of almost $250 million in loans. Now, if you're looking for a loan officer, we cannot more highly recommend Joel. He's the very best we've ever worked with. He did my loan, my most recent loan. He was amazing. His team's great. He's everybody I've ever known that's worked with Joel says the same thing. But Joel can be reached. So everyone listening, you can reach him by email at joel at rate.com. Again, joel at rate.com. Or you can shoot him a text message or call him at 773-654-2049. And in just a moment, we're going to be also mentioning Joel has a, a weekly update newsletter, an email that I want everybody who's listening to subscribe to because it gives you everything you need to know about what to talk to your clients about what's going on in the world of lending. But let's say hello to the biggest Cubs fan I know, Joel Schaub. Hey, DJ. Thanks so much for having me on. I can't believe we're already into the second month of uh, 2022. How'd we get here? Uh, you know, it's it's funny. So so Joel is is fortunate to, at the moment to not be here uh, uh, dealing with with the weather that we have. Um, thankfully, uh, Joel is 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 uh, protected from the elements because today and here locally in Chicago, I think we have like seven or eight inches, maybe more. So it is a uh, it's such a weird day today. Um, and of course, we have listeners from all over the country and guaranteed rates of everywhere in the country too. Um, but here locally, it is it's just a weird day. So I'm only thinking about today and it's Groundhog Day as well by the, you know, the day that we're recording this. So I don't even know if we're getting more more winter or more spring or, or I forget how that works, but I don't know what Puxatani Phil, if he saw his shadow this morning. But yeah, it's all of a sudden, I had all these plans for things I wanted to get done in January. Uh, and now it's February and I'm like, oh no, I'm a month behind. Uh, I don't know if, if, um, if you, you can relate to that at all, but you're right. Like, how did we get here? How did the time move so quickly? I don't know if he's going to see his shadow or not, but my prediction is you're going to be shoveling snow for a while, DJ, and I'm going to be laughing about it. That's okay. We love it. There's no problems there. Um, yeah. I love that you said about January, you're kind of planning and what you wanted to get done. And in the real estate world, it's the exact same thing. We have goals and we need to always uh, update and we need to refine. And that's what we're going to talk about here today is how we can get offers in that are designed to win. Because right now we're seeing a lot of multiple offer situations, aren't we? It, inventory is low as, as everyone probably who's listening, no matter what market you might be servicing, uh, most people can appreciate that and, or rather not appreciate it, but most people can appreciate understanding that we're all dealing with it. And you do have to sort of get creative these days in order to get noticed. Um, there's a lot of competition. Rates are still really low. And so there's just a lot of uh, people who are able to put these offers in that, um, boy, the competition's fierce. So yeah, I, I absolutely would love to talk about that because there's a lot of stress, I think, in working with buyers right now. I, I hear it a lot with the, all the agents here at our company and, and even agents I know outside who are just, they're just stressed. It's like, it's tough. It's tough if you're working with a buyer. So I'd love to hear some advice about what you can do to help get your offers a little bit more, uh, more attention than, they, than, than they're getting. Well, over the years, I've talked to thousands of agents because of all the offers that have come in for my clients. And the one thing that's being talked about so much more recently is the scrutiny on who's doing the mortgage. Okay. We yeah. take all the cash buyers out. If we're lucky enough to be working with cash buyers, that's great. Cause then you can cut people out 
like me that cause all the problems, right? <laughs> it's the mortgage folks that gunk up the deals, right? If you have a good buyer and they're paying cash, it's going to win. The second best is having somebody that can update the pre-approval letter for you to make the offer look as strong as possible. And I wanted to review the two strategies here if you're an agent submitting offers. And if you're like a lot of agents right now and you're listening and you've submitted offer number three and number four and number five and we still can't win, at the end of this, we're going to have some new strategies that you can absolutely walk away with that you can put in place right away to hopefully not have to submit offer six, seven, and eight to get it approved. Okay. So let's Let, start yeah. with, yeah, let's no, start I'm saying, with I'm this excited. idea here. Yeah. Yeah, I am too. So excited just to go through these two strategies in terms of the dollar amount that's listed on the pre-approval letter. We used to have agents that would say if the property is listed for 400 and we're going to offer 380, please update my letter to show just 380,000. We know that strategy, right? Sure. I like the opposite strategy a lot more. I like showing that our buyers are very strong, especially when there's multiple offers and showing that they're approved well over the list price. And just but wait, yeah, but wait, go but ahead. Does it won't. So I, I know what a lot of our agents, sorry, our agents, our listeners uh, yeah. and viewers might, might've might be saying right at this moment, which is why I interrupted you. Uh, thank you for allowing me to interrupt, but just this is important because if, if what Joel just said is, is very important. So I'm going to just, we're going to roll it back just slightly. So yeah. Joel just said, Hey, when you're putting an offer letter, maybe traditional wisdom, maybe the lender would suggest this. Maybe the agent might suggest this and say, Hey, let's, yes, we know you could be qualified for more, but, but I don't want the bot, the seller to look at the total amount you could be qualified for, and then maybe use that as a point of leverage to then try to drive up the price to get more out of the, the buyer. So that's like the traditional sort of flinch res response is, oh no, but if I show my cards, won't that give the buyer more ammo to come back to me and say, we need you to bump it up a bit. I think you're exactly right in a normal market. I think you're yeah. absolutely correct. This is a strategy where our cards are on the table. Okay. Yeah. I'm approved to $550,000. You want this home for 400,000. Doesn't mean that my buyer is going to go up to 550 just because they are approved to 550. But out of the other offers you have, our offer is the strongest. Yes. And just think about it from the listing agent side. Why are we going to take an offer from somebody who's barely qualified versus somebody who's very qualified? So talk to your loan officers, okay? The people that really help you get deals done right now are going to be your best friends, okay? Go buy and I also, lunch, buy I also think They're busy. Yeah, this is a great opportunity too for the buying agent to also reiterate that to the listing agent when the offer is being submitted say hey just so you know in case you miss it um my buyer's actually approved for more and then if you need to spell it out further about what that might mean for the actual loan process you know um which hopefully you wouldn't have to explain that probably means that that pro that loan approval process will go a lot faster and smoother and you could also say and by the way this is not a you know a, an opportunity for for you know for you to then drive up the well you wouldn't need to say that but but the reality of it is 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 it might seem scary to the listing agent but at the end of the day what Joel just said is really really important, which is it actually is a stronger offer at the existing price you want to give because it suggests that your client really has their financial life together. And this deal is going to close. And right now, in fact, just this morning on our management meeting here at our company, one of our, our managers said, has anyone noticed that uh, loans are closing a lot slower these days? Is that just me? And everybody on the call who's practicing goes, yeah, they really are going longer. So this is a perfect re reason and timing to do it. So um, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to steal all your thunder, but that is such an amazingly powerful strategy. And I'm almost wondering if, again, this conventional logic of no, 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 don't show that you can pay for, you can pay more because that'll maybe give them an opportunity to drive up the price. And again, maybe in a traditional market, you wouldn't do that, but this is not a traditional market. 
I like that you said thunder. You didn't steal the thunder. You're bringing the thunder. You're literally talking <laughs> about the things that are going to help agents that are listening close just one more transaction, okay? And so now that could be a little counterintuitive to somebody saying that we're going to show our cards, but it, I know it's ringing home to a lot of people listening right now where they have had offer after offer lost, okay? Let's go in and get your loan officer to update the letter to the highest amount they're approved for, show the second thing. Let's show the highest down payment that they could do, even if that's not how much they plan to do. There's a lot of people that can absolutely qualify for a loan for five or 10% down, DJ. But oftentimes, if there's multiple offers and the letter says 5% down buyer, it goes right to the bottom of the barrel, right? Sure. Let's change that. Let's have the frank conversation with the buyer about the most that they could put down, have the loan officer update the letter to show the most down that they could do in all honesty. And even if they're approved to put down less, it's no problem to show that they are approved with 20 or 25% down at a much higher amount. And then once the contract comes in, it's absolutely acceptable as long as they get a clear to close in time to select the exact loan amount that they want. Okay, big time strategy here. If you understand what I'm talking about, this will go a long way as a buyer's agent to submitting offers that are designed to win by making the offer as strong as possible and it's not lying. Okay, we're not going to say somebody can put 20% down if they don't have it. Right. But if they have it and they do qualify for five or 10% down, we're not going to highlight the fact that there's something in the offer that might be less desirable than somebody else. So we want to exemplify all the positives on these offers. And, and also for agents that aren't all that familiar, it is a little harder these days um, to get through some of the approval process. If you have a complicated situation, the restrictions of, from, from, you know, federal guidelines and, and lending guidelines and compliance really have made things a little slower and, and more tricky because of course, uh, everyone wants to do things above board. I'll tell you a quick story. Cause it's just happened yesterday. I was getting my teeth cleaned by my dentist, who is just a wonderful, wonderful person, very successful financially from my understanding. I don't know his full financial picture, but from what he's told me over the 10, years I've known him. He, he does quite well. He owns his own practice. He has a 4,000 square foot um, uh, a con townhome or condo uh, down in the Gold Coast, right across from his office. And he, um, because he has an S corporation where he pays himself a salary what a lot of business owners do, and he pays himself a, a very modest salary because that's what is allowed uh, with S corporations. But on paper, he maybe doesn't look as financially strong. He tried to refinance his wonderful condo or, or whatever it is, um, and God only knows what the cost of that condo might be. And he says two thirds of it is already paid off. So he says, I'm really just refinancing one third to try to take advantage of rates. And he, um, he, got, he got denied. And he goes, you know, the crazy thing is, he goes, I have the cash to pay it off. I have cash to do it. But he goes, even that, he goes, it's just complicated right now. And so that's happening to even, you know, people who, who are really financially secure. So I think these, these examples you're giving are really important because, uh, you know, the last thing a listing agent wants to see is an offer that looks complicated or tricky because the down payment's low or, or lower than what they would ideally like. Um, you know, the amount that's being financed is, is low or is higher than they, they would prefer. So I, I think you're absolutely right. Like these are great, great ideas just to give the listing agent a, oh, this looks good. Thank goodness. Kind of, kind of feeling. You're exactly right. If I'm an agent and I don't care if I've been in the business less than a year or more than 20 years, I'm making friends with a local lender that's really reputable. These are the people that are going to help us get deals pushed through. Okay. As a realtor, you know how many lenders call you all the time, right? I understand that. Find the ones that you actually know that have a good reputation in your community and, and partner with them. They're the ones that are going to help you get deals through because listing agents know which banks and which mortgage companies are easy and which ones are a pain in the butt. Okay, for real. And if the buyer isn't paying cash, you better well believe that the listing agents are looking at who's doing the financing much more than the specific terms of the offer. 
I think that's a really, really good point. And our whole intention with this show is not with Joel, uh, his month, the, the monthly series that we do learn with the lender is not to say, here's some cool rate facts that you can take to your clients. Although we sometimes do that because it, it's appropriate and useful. And we certainly will talk about rates. However, what we're really trying to do is help the agent really separate what the, the, from all the other agents that they might be competing with in their local marketplace. And, and by choosing a lender that can give you tips like exactly like these, uh, most agents aren't thinking like this. They're just like, just whatever the lending institution provides as far as a pre-approval, that's what we're using. And we're going to, we're going to submit it. And now you can say to your client, Hey, I, I got, I have a few ideas about ways we might be able to get this offer noticed. Um, this is the kind of education that an agent can use to really just shine above all the other agents in their market. There's a big difference in seeing people that are really taking the next step in their career this year in terms of doing a lot more transactions and putting their foot on the gas and then the ones that are not. And I'll tell you the difference, and it may be hard to hear, but agents aren't letting the buyers dictate the terms. They're not letting the buyer say, well, I went online and found a bank out of five states away, and this is who we're using. If you don't want to submit offer after offer, one of the things that you can do is build your team. Have the people in your community that you know that are absolutely there to help you, that have your back, and be that resource. Lending is part of it. Whether you're an attorney state or an escrow state, connecting with local attorneys and local escrow officers and building that team up, right? The yeah. same with appraisers and inspectors. Knowing the people that are going to help you get your deals done is going to differentiate yourselves greatly. And it comes back down to submitting offers that are designed to win. Because I don't know if you're like me, but I don't want to go submit six or seven offers. If we have to, that's fine. But what would be great is that we're getting our offers accepted and recognized because we're making it easy on the listing agent to accept our offer. Okay, so we've covered a lot right there. Um, DJ, there was a couple of other things that I know that we have to get to before we wrap I just up. wanted, yeah, I wanted to talk just quickly about rates. So we talked about this a lot a month ago because it was really prevalent in the news. It has become even more so with, I would say, I, I don't like to use the word mainstream media because there's some negative connotation, mm -hmm. to that, but I just mean the, the news that your clients are absorbing, whether they're watching something on TV or reading, you know, blogs or maybe even newspapers, we're hearing a lot about the Fed raising rates. So what is that going to mean in, in, in your interpretation? of it to the lending world and what to agents be talking to clients who are reading this information and probably getting a little freaked out about refinancing possibly or putting that buy offer in because maybe it's not going to be as, as as much money as as you know fred creates raising rates i won't be able to afford as much um are people freaking out about this right now are you seeing a lot of uh you know worried phone calls from from consumers um and then what would you be saying if you were an agent my staff and I have had to talk a lot of people off the edge in the last three or four weeks in terms of, oh my gosh, rates have gone up and they've gone up so much and the feds haven't even raised rates yet, DJ. Right. So what's going to happen when the feds do raise rates? Is this going to be the last year? Am I not going to have any more transactions? Are buyers going to stop buying real estate? All these questions come up and we kind of say it laughingly, but these are real concerns, right? So one of the things that I've been saying a lot lately, and you can share this with your buyers that are talking about, I thought rates recently were below 3%. When I look online now, they're averaging in the mid threes. The Federal Reserve only meets eight times a year, but mortgage rates change almost daily, right? So we're not waiting for the feds to raise rates for the full impact of these future rate increases to be baked in, okay? So in other words, when the Fed does raise rates, they don't call all the mortgage companies and say, by the way, reminder, today's the day. Increase your rates by a quarter percent, everybody. It's been well choreographed by Jerome Powell and those at the Fed that they are going to raise rates two or three times this year. And since there are only eight meetings and mortgage rates happen all day long, it would go to reason that mortgage rates are ahead of Fed meetings right? So when the feds do raise rates here coming up in March, I don't anticipate mortgage rates moving up that much more already from where they're at. So what does that mean? 
we can talk some sense and a little bit of calmness into buyers that are really afraid that they're going to lose out, that rates are going to go to four and a half and 5% this year. And you can be the voice of reason if you're a realtor where your competitors are doing the opposite. They're selling fear and they're telling buyers, you better hurry up and submit this offer. We're going to lose out and rates are going to go up. I just don't like the strategy of selling fear. Be educated, educate, and help people. I know we all want to make commissions, and I know we all want to close transactions, but there's a right way to do it and a wrong way. And I'm telling you now, rates for the rest of the year are going to average in the threes. There's not going to be some major push to four and a half or five percent. In pre-COVID, we're now finally just getting back up to the point where rates were never lower than they are now before COVID. So let all that sink in and then think of how bad the market's going to be. It's going to be really good. Yeah. It's, it's, um, it's just always, we're all so immediately focused on headlines, right? We, we are, are, I I'm susceptible to it. You know, if you, if you go to one website, you'll see they, you know, one news outlet talks exclusively about how the president is failing the country. And then another website says, no, no, he's, you know, there's a lot of more positive stories. So it sort of depends on your news source also, you know, what you're paying attention to. But at the end of the day, if we look at it with perspective, rates are still really amazing. And it's still an amazing time to be able to buy. Now, inventory's down and that's tough. But that's why we gave some suggestions today about how to maybe Get, get towards the top of the pile versus bottom of the pile, uh, especially, you know, where um, people who are, are exclusively focused on rates, buyers, maybe they're shopping some of these uh, institutions that, you know, they don't know aren't as reputable or aren't as professional. Um, they just go, oh, the rate's lowest, well, you know, bank's a bank. Well, just go there and not understanding that the the agent, the attorney, the seller on the other side of the deal goes, I don't know who that is, or that I've had experiences with that particular lender. And it's pretty, it's pretty dicey. So these are things that the public doesn't know about, right? The public only knows what they see, what they read, what they hear. Um, So this is what we're trying to break through is to give you the agent, this kind of information. So you can cut through all of some of, you know, the, the, the nonsense that's out there and really say, no, this is, this is really what's happening. And then you become the trusted provider. And then they stop paying as much attention to things that might be trying to influence them to feel a certain way or another, where you can influence them in in, uh, an authentic and and positive way to say, here's what's really happening. DJ, I wish I could tell your listeners that there was a major difference between different banks in terms of interest rates offered. And it's just simply not the case, okay? There are not one bank somewhere that's going to be a point lower than another bank unless they're being charged points, okay? And as much as mortgage companies try to differentiate themselves and say, our rates are better, we're the lowest and all that, think of it this way. There's a cost for an iPhone. I love telling this story because this will make sense. If you buy an iPhone from Apple, it costs whatever it is. It's way too much. And this is not an advertisement for or against Apple. But I think an iPhone today costs, you know, it's over $1,000 to buy that phone. Are there some websites online that are somehow selling an iPhone for $599? Sure. Maybe. But if they could do it every single time, they would be the number one seller of iPhones in the whole United States. And we would know who they were. We would know that name. And it's kind of the same with mortgages. If the rate today is 3.4% and we're seeing somebody that's offering something less, they might be able to do it once or twice, but they're not going to be able to do it for the long term. And it's all about reputation and making sure that your clients are working with somebody that can close. We all want something low, but we know chasing that deal or tripping over dollars to get dimes. There's a lot of things that may not be the case. And at the end of the day, it's all about teaching, educating, and making sure that your clients are working with trusted, reputable folks. Yeah, I think that's perfectly said. And also, we want to make sure that everyone knows that Joel has an email list where every week he sends out a market update and it's bite-sized, it's digestible, but it's specifically for agents to be able to talk to clients about what's going on. So you don't have to wait once a month for Joel to come on our show, although we appreciate you listening here too. Um, But I really encourage everybody to sign up for this newsletter. Um, Joel, what's the best way that somebody can get added to your, your distribution list? 
we're never even opening it up before. It just kind of became viral in terms of people were seeing this and sharing it and even like printing it out and putting it in their office because it gives you real ideas that you can speak to. And if you're a managing broker or you're in an office, how to uh, lead a meeting and talk about just small things that are really relevant right now in the mortgage world. So uh, yeah, you can be added. It's as simple as uh, sending an email now to Joel, J-O-E-L at rate.com. It's as simple as that, Joel at rate.com. And in the subject line, you can just say, add me. That's it. There's nothing else to it. Add me and we'll be able and to- what I'll, what I'll do, and you'll have to remind me to do this because sure. I'm sure I'll forget, but I will create a form on Keeping It Real's website, which will automatically send that to you in real time. So that way somebody can also do it right from our site and get you that, that information. And I'm telling you, we have 800 agents here at our firm. It's the only one we send our agents here um, because, and quite frankly, it's the only one we receive, which is also really interesting, right? Because with the amount of agents we have at our firm, you would think we'd be getting a lot of these from other uh, loan officers who say, hey, please distribute this. We really don't get that. So that's the extra mile that Joel and his team goes. And this is not, Joel puts this together. This is, this is him and his team's work. And it's really, really helpful for agents. So please, everyone go do that. Um, also, if you want to work with Joel and partner with Joel, you know, guaranteed rates licensed in all, all states, uh, they can, you know, work with, with buyers from all walks of life. Um, but if somebody wants to partner or work with you or has a buyer that they want to talk to you about or a refi for, for example, what's the best opportunity, uh, same way, should I email you as well? This is just a reminder that the mortgage side of things is really helpful. So whether it's me or somebody that you know, partner with these mortgage professionals. Not only will they help your clients get deals done, but if you find the right ones that really want your business, they should spend money with you in RESPA compliant ways. And I know I get so much pushback from these lenders saying, why are you explaining this? But it's so true. If you're a lender and you're working with an agent, you should find ways to co-market and spend money together in a real RESPA compliant way. So if I'm an agent out there and I have the same loan officer that I really like, and he's always asking me for my business, I'd call him up right now and I'd ask him, can we spend some money on an event? I have an event coming up and see if they'd be willing to spend money with you. The good loan officers out there that are really doing production would have no problem splitting a good size event with you. They might spend several thousand dollars and that's one of the big things that you can have in your corner is a good trusted loan officer, whether it's me or somebody that you know. So I, I appreciate all of that. You can always reach me. It's easy. It's joel at rate.com. Uh, and that's the short email for guaranteed rate.com. Uh, 773-654-2049 is a direct line and try me. <laughs> you'll actually get a reply from me. We answer the phones and we're really there to help you partner uh, and get deals closed. Yeah, and, and it's all about giving. And Joel is famous for saying on our show and, in, and also in, outside of the show is givers get. And he, I, I know that he walks that talk. And I know if I was an agent looking for a partner, I would want somebody like Joel who says, let me help you versus let me help your client get the best rate or, or it, which of course they want to do as well. But the, really what Joel and his team do is help you build your business versus close deals. And Joel closes more deals than just about anybody in the country, but he does it by giving. It's sort of counterintuitive a bit in a way. It's, it's this um, give and, and uh, law of reciprocity almost. Like if I give so much, people are going to want to work with me. Um, so that's our whole intention of doing this particular show every month. In fact, it's really what we do on all of our episodes Episodes, but this is a perfect example of the kind of relationship you want somebody who wants to come on a show like this. He doesn't promote himself, but he offers the opportunity to speak with him, but he's constantly providing value. Think about what that would mean for your clients. If he's willing to do that for you here for free on our show, imagine what he would be willing to do when you actually have a deal. So um, 
I could never give a big enough commercial for Joel, even though we, this is not a commercial because he really walks the talk. And I really encourage everyone to, to reach out to him and see if you guys can work together. So reach out to him, Joel at rate.com at the very least, get on his email list. It's really great. Um, and, and on behalf of uh, all of our listeners, Joel, we thank you for your time. I mean, Joel is one of the top LOs in the country. He doesn't have time to do this and he finds time. In addition to that, um, we also want on uh, behalf of Joel and myself to thank everyone listening and watching really appreciate all of your, your love and support. Please leave us a review, whatever podcast app or system you might be listening to this on right now, whether it's Apple uh, or, or rather now it's called Apple podcasts or iTunes, Google play, Spotify, Stitcher, Pandora, et cetera. Please let us know what you think of the show. And also tell a friend about this episode. You have other agents in your office. They are worried about what the clients are freaking out about rates or how to get offers accepted. Send them a link to this episode that will help them and you will feel good about doing that as well. So thank you guys so much for continuing to support our show. Thanks for leaving us a review. Thanks for telling a friend and thanks to Joel for continuing to come on year after year after year. Uh, we are so, uh, my biggest fear is one day Joel goes, I really don't have time to do this anymore. So we are so grateful that he is taking the time to do this because nobody has ever uh, in the lending world provided this kind of value to our listeners. So thank you, Joel. If I'm an agent right now, I'm taking a big, deep breath. I'm not worried about rates this year. There's a lot of positivity and I'm taking this and I'm rem reminding myself, what can I do to give back, right? If every, uh, the focus is giver's gain and the more you give, the more you get, what are one or two things that I can do as an agent right now to give back to my clients so that I have a really successful 2022? And DJ, thanks for having me on. Great. Thanks everyone. We will see you on the next episode. And, uh, Joel, uh, see you next month. Thank you.